Hi everyone, I'm happy to see you again and today I'm going to be talking about something that's uh, been highly requested and also something that I feel really uh, very strong feelings about. Um, actually, I just came back from uh, the reading room for uh, step one preparation, but this is one extremely important question regarding medicine. How do you study medicine? How do you um, cope with the syllabus? And what do you do for theory and what do you do for practicals? So, I think the most basic question I wanted to answer today was which books to use? And for me, Davidson was enough. I passed with Davidson. I did not get amazing marks. Uh, I would have gotten amazing marks if I had chosen a higher yield exam oriented pinpointed book but that's not my style i need to understand what i'm reading i need to take notes from what i'm reading and you know condense things and use my brain while reading i'm not saying that if you use those books that you're not using your brain it's very pinpointed for the exam which uh, is like you, i think you would find a similarity between uh or a comparison between Shembulingam from first year for physiology and Mantapa for final year medicine. Uh, so I regret Shembulingam. It is one of the biggest regrets I have in life. Uh, physiology is a subject you have to learn so impeccably, so perfectly, and it is pretty much very important for everything else it's like the layer it is the basement membrane and that's on which you like develop things and my physiology collapsed it just broke the basement membrane like it's it's very uh, horrible example but what i think you get what i'm trying to say it is a very very useless futile exercise if you're going to read jumbling i'm just to be past final year and not really learn physiology ever because it will come back to haunt you either for your neat exams or for usm i think step one is where i'm suffering the most because of my lack of physiology knowledge or at least i never learned it properly so that's one thing uh, theory ultimately my opinion use davidson you will not regret it but you might not get the score you want or the number of marks you want to which i say if you're okay with sacrificing it and trying to pass with this this knowledge is enough to pass for sure if you're able to understand davidson and if you're able to formulate notes or uh, formulate a thought process based on davidson i think you're fine I know very few people who read Harrison's and honestly I don't think it's a good idea for the only reason that it's so vast and you need to start in second year if you want to do Harrison's. So if there are any second years or third year students here, uh, I would probably try, I would tell you guys to try Harrison's but you would have to sacrifice a lot of extra time just to read Harrison's and I think second years uh, you should be reading Robbins, you should be perfecting your pathological concepts maybe you'd have uh, time for it in third year uh so that's harrison's uh, my note on harrison's is avoid it unless you are capable of accomplishing it it's either do or die do not try to do both <laughs> do not try to um somehow swim through the harrison's you will not achieve much and now for the smaller books like uh matthews which i heard was a condensed notes of um, harrison's i didn't really prefer um I didn't even read one sentence. Forget prefer. I didn't even read one sentence of Matthews for the only reason that uh, it did not appeal much to me. And by then I'd already bought Chug, which I did not read also. I read a few sentences, a few topics here and there very haphazardously. And Chug gives another version of Shambhalingam. Now, you can use Ma Mantapa and Davidson combined as in whatever extra points you see in davidson you can write into mantapa and i feel like that could work it, it was made to work by a lot of seniors in my college and a lot of people in my own patch i just couldn't after reading davidson and creating my own notes which i was so proud of i was like mantapa who cares and yeah i did not get the best marks uh, let's just leave it at that i passed and i'm grateful for having passed and that's about it <coughs> Okay, so practicals, I would suggest this one thing which many people miss out on and that is start reading as early as second year, as early as second year and 
if you're in second year there's this book called Golwala I'll try to find the Amazon link for it if it um, is available on it Golwala clinical methods I personally loved but I didn't have time the last in the last minute but I think respiratory system is what I ended up reading the clinical examination for from Golwala and I loved it but there's another book called Palekar which is your gold standard read Palekar like do not neglect it learn everything from Palekar you should be able to regurgitate almost everything from Palekar when asked that's how good it is and that's how important it is that's how high yield it is I cannot emphasize this enough read Palekar from day one of final year if possible read it even earlier like in third year itself but read it every single single day read a little you don't have to spend the entire day on it but learn your clinical methods because that is what they will test you on and if yours is anything like a private college like it was for me uh, you're probably not gonna get a lot of patients you're probably not gonna get a lot of people to practice on and you will not know the method which is probably the most embarrassing thing if an examiner comes in and asks you to perform auscultation on the chest you cannot just put your stethoscope wherever you want you need to know which areas are what which areas are significant for which type of regurgitation or murmur or stenosis or whatever it is uh, you need to know these things and I don't think any other book will cover it as perfectly and as like it's perfect enough for undergraduate read palikar every day this is my opinion on how you should study medicine hi everyone uh, as my friend covered most of the topics in the medicine already let me give some insight from my side so coming to the resources i prefer or i ask all of you in 8th sem to go and watch najib videos Watching Najib videos will strengthen your basics in CBS and CNS and it will help you in your entire answering pattern because in final year you don't get the questions that you expect. There is no performa, there is no question answer system and the volume is very huge. So you cannot cover most of the question and answers or most of the topics from your main textbooks. If you have these basics, you can make up and write any answer. Trust me, whatever may be the question, you can write everything. So go and watch Najib videos. At the same time, don't waste time in watching all the videos by Najib. Like he has so many small, small details in, and there are like too many videos. Just make sure you sort them out, filter them and watch the most important ones which cover the basic anatomy, physio and pathology. In uh, CVS, uh, I can give you the examples like all the congenital heart diseases and the heart sounds which are a must. It will cover your medicine, it will cover your pediatrics. You don't need to open your textbook for those topics again. And coming to Harrison's, uh, so for most of the people it is pride. I read Harrison is what people say but I feel it's pointless to have such pride because Harrison is a foreign author book and it takes a lot of time for you to read it and at the end of the day you don't remember anything. Such uh, things are of no use when you are in final year but at the same time I prefer or I would advise you guys to read about the symptomatology that's given in Harrison. It's a very small part in Harrison and the symptoms like pain, vomiting, cough, cold, etc. This helps you especially in your practicals because you go to a patient for history taking. You ask them the complaints. The complaint will be pain. So you should know what to extract from the patient about the pain. Otherwise, you'll be clueless. You should know about the type of pain, radiation of pain, nature of pain, intermittent or continuous, or there are any aggravating factors, relieving factors. This might seem simple when I'm talking, but there are so many symptoms, so many complaints, and you should know accurately what to ask for each complaint. That is like most important thing in history taking, and if you are done with that in your pediatrics especially your most of the practicals are like smooth set because in pediatrics history taking is of much more importance than the practical examination 
so this is about Harrison's even if you are in final year you can just spend like 10-15 days on symptomatology uh, one hour per day and make uh, notes on it that is more easier so coming to infections Davidson is a real good book I agree but there are infections that are more prevalent in India for example we had a dengue epidemic last year uh, few months and it's been going on now hundreds and hundreds of patients on dengue so things like that are well written by our own authors Indian authors so if you read about dengue in your micro book that is Anant Narayan very well you can just go back to that and brush it off or if if you say that okay I just passed micro somehow I don't want to go back to micro and do it again you have this golden book called as Mantapa which gives you all the infections in a very concise manner and in a manner that is really needed in your medicine also infections is a compulsory question and it is most of the times an essay question you cannot leave infections you have to read it better go to Mantapa for all the infections not just the ones that are local to us let it be any infection this Indian author book gives you how it is treated and how it is dealt with in India it tells you about what a primary care center does what a secondary care center does like in our system what we do and infections like dengue malaria typhoid these are most important for us to know as doctors if we pass out we should be able to do something to those patients when they come you cannot be clueless if you're clueless about a disease that is you know affecting your cns or cvs as an mbbs doctor it's absolutely fine but if you're clueless about these basic things it's bad so better go to mantapa or your micro book for these infections now for those people that is the 2k15 batch who are in their final year and who are clueless about medicine your pre-finals are coming and the finals are also coming trust me if you have not started reading medicine till date you can still pass because that's what we did like not literally didn't start studying we did some background and basic things like the symptomatologies and palaker and all but for the main topics you still have time lots of time so my advice would be if you are bad at CVS and CNS in terms of anatomy of CNS and physiology of CVS then go to Mantapa take ask 10 year question papers write down the questions read the questions and answers read it as question and answer only don't go for any understanding logic etc blindly read it as question answer write the answer you'll pass but even now you can start Davidson and read the topics like Dermatology, Psychiatry, GI. GI is very good and Respi also. GI and Respi are very good in Davidson. Rheumatology is very good. Please don't go to Matthews or Mantapa for Rheumatology because it's horrible there. So you can choose, you can read 2-3 pages of each topic from both the books and decide even now. There is like no strict rule that you have to follow this book or that book and you are reading Mantapa and you feel some answer is so stupid and illogical then you can go and open your Davidson and see there what it is and then you can write your notes and make it into the Mantapa that's how I read I started my reading just before the pre-finals and I concentrated on medicine after pre-finals uh, for most of the part but uh, I read CVS and CNS and the stupid topics like poisoning, environment immunology, anti-cancer drugs, all these things from Mantapa, whole and soul, I didn't even refer to Davidson. Whereas coming to topics that are beautiful, that are, you know, you feel like reading them, you understand them at the first instance, like endocrinology and all, just go to Davidson, read it there. If you feel you need to make notes, make it, but don't just in the fear of failing the exam don't go and sit with mantapa and at the end don't regret that you don't know anything in medicine because when you come to internship now we we know we are facing things and we know how it is you should know some basics it's not that i have passed i'll sit and read again it won't happen that way your internship goes on you should know some basics you should know the little little things minutest things that matter and coming to which questions to read which questions to not read uh, you should know 
things that are prevalent here in our place in our country like you read the entire endocrinology and you left diabetes mellitus that sounds stupid right because every third or fourth person you meet is having diabetes cns meningitis is important meningitis is the most common question but people with cerebrovascular strokes are what you see in your wards always CVA and paralysis. This is what is your long case probably for uh, 50 or 60 percent of your uh, batch. So cerebrovascular stroke is something that you cannot miss. Coming to CVS, myocardial infarctions, STEMI and non-STEMI. This you should know how to differentiate it, how to treat which one. These are like the few basics that everyone expects you to know. Sometimes the papers are bad, you get the most unexpected, most uncommon, most rare questions. But we cannot sit and keep preparing for those rare chances, right? What we have to do is to prepare for the most common things and the most interesting things. Yeah. So if you can see this, hold up. I hope you can see it it's not focusing exactly okay um so this is a note for atrial fibrillation from davidson this is all purely davidson and so you can go through like the content and create a flowchart of your own for example like for pathogenesis uh this is everything that was present in davidson and i feel like it was more than enough for me and there was a classification and you know obviously there were multiple etiologies and features that are specific to atrial fibrillation that i just thought was so worth it and investigations also specific uh, mostly to rule out other diseases and management this is by far the most important part for atrial fibrillation and that was because it based on the classification you have to start how you're gonna treat it and it's extremely important not only for final year but also for uh, in internship and any other exam you're planning on um, taking and Davidson gave it pretty clear-cut he was like first you do this second you do this uh, for example for the persistent atrial fibrillation if you can see here there's rhythm control and then there's rate control hold up rate control and then there's thromboprophylaxis and once you write all of this and obviously these are very few lines per page so once you read all of this there is like no suffering involved you will end up writing all of this if not more than this because obviously it's a final exam and you have to write a lot more but i think you understood my point this is my golden egg as she put it uh, for final exams for atrial fibrillation and there's another topic that i ended up taking notes for too and that was myocardial infarction because hey this is probably the most important topic from cvs if you do not read myocardial infarction it is called negligence like pure negligence so these were also condensed from davidson and if you want uh, we'll put the pictures on instagram our instagram handle was uh mbs wali didi if you want it uh, we'll post it there so here is how it goes i don't think i need to show you the entire thing but i just show you that you know it's headings and bullet points of the most important things that are relevant to myocardial infarction and also i created my own um lab values and how they elevate over time obviously this is not perfectly labeled but this was just for me to be able to identify what elevates when and yeah i think this is about it oh yeah and also the complications okay so this is the management obviously you need to be perfect with this because hey it's the most common thing ever and complications um obviously you need to be perfect with these as well uh, they are most frequently asked and yeah that's about it thank you um if you guys have any other questions comments uh let me know and oh yeah i just wanted to add a note uh please subscribe to our channel if you would like more content like this i know we haven't been the most regular but uh, uh the life of a medico what can we do okay then bye see you and hopefully you'll uh, catch up with us on our next video